It's looking like a tough day at St George's in Blackpool. We're going to start off today by tasting some chocolate. Yes, I'm going to have to make you do this, I'm sorry. Today, we're going to start a project on chocolate. We're going to look at the packaging, we're going to look at the taste, we're going to look at the advertising, and you're going to work together in teams to come up with your own bar of chocolate. Elsewhere in school, they're having a heated debate. This house would make staying in your own country of birth compulsory. So the country you were born in, you would never leave that country, you would stay exactly where you were and so would everybody else. I would like to introduce the first speaker for the pro proposition, Becky. Hello, I'm Becky from the proposition team. I'm going to talk to you about immigration, steady population and world peace. At the start of every debating unit, the children are petrified. Uh, they don't want to stand up, they don't want to do it. By the end of it, they all want to stand up, they all want to do it. <laughs> so that, that is a plus. And down the corridor, they're working out in the brain gym. OK, are you ready for this? This one, I want you to spell your name backwards going that way. And this one, I want you to do it this way, forwards, at the same time. Have we got it? You have the ability to actually learn key skills. How to listen, how to pay attention, how to do debating, all those different skills. Then you actually have running parallel along mm. those. You have the psychology that you need to be able to do those skills, which turn into competencies. And those two words, skills and competencies, are what this is all about. We're trying to move away from content. You've still got to have the content, obviously, but we're trying to build in this skill, make them more independent. You know, children are leaving school and they're not independent enough to go and, you know, fight in that big wide world. So we're, we're hopefully equipping them with adult skills to enable them to do that. It's called living education. It's cross-curricular. It happens for two hours a week. And at least when there's chocolate involved, the pupils appear to love it. Because we have it twice a week and there's loads of different topics within it. It's not just like one topic that you do. You do loads of different... It's like different lessons all tied into one lesson. But this has been the funnest so far, making chocolate, because I like chocolate and um, it's been good learning how to cook and that. We had to think about what we could do to make our students learn better. We'd worked harder in the classroom, we'd put extra lessons in, we had Easter schools, it wasn't improving as much as we'd liked. So what we felt was we had to go back to basics, back to fundamentals, and start thinking about the kind of skills, the kind of competences, the kind of behaviours that we needed in order to push the results up across the board. The Chocolate Challenge is part of an enterprise unit. Pupils are briefed, to design, package and market a new chocolate bar. We're looking for students to be able to work as a team. So we're looking at cooperation, we're looking at planning, we're looking at delegation. We're also looking at their ability to evaluate. It's got nuts, it's got caramel, it's got a pattern on the bottom and it tastes nice. So we're looking at them to be able to look at the the product and be able to uh, evaluate it, see whether it's met what they said they would meet. Bless you. Can do it. Get it on the caramel. Bless you. You should now have designed your chocolate bar. You should have researched all the different flavours you wanted. You should have gone on the internet and you should have researched other chocolate companies, all the things that are on the market at the moment decided who your chocolate bar is for, and you should today have a good idea of what you're going to make. In the cookery room, they're preparing for the final stages of the chocolate challenge. OK, all the skills we've talked about through the weeks, about cooperation, working together, delegating tasks, helping each other, all right? You're going to, we're going to be looking at 
we've looked at over the last few weeks and we'll look at today. Because if you all try to do the same job at the same time, you won't get everything done. We've actually done questionnaires with the students to have a measure of their response and they've all been very positive. They particularly like the cooking. They like the fact that they get to make stuff and they can eat it. We've melted the chocolate. We've melted um, milk chocolate and white chocolate so far. Just because we're making this thing where it's got two different types of chocolate in it. We researched the different types of chocolate and um, like Cadbury's and that, the main ones. So, uh, and, and we've looked at what like, they use and how, and how they make, make it. And so we've got, we've got um, dream chocolate in there from Cadbury's and we've got Asda chocolate. Yeah, we use the internet and we also use uh, the computers and books. And we went on to Cadbury, like the Cadbury's website and got ingredients and stuff you can use to make it. Right, well done. Well done indeed. We've got, looks like we've got some fantastic chocolate designs here. I'm particularly looking forward, because of course I have to taste them all. I'm particularly looking forward to that marshmallow and chocolate one that looks <laughs> particularly... Kachimo. What's it called? Kachimo. Kachimo, the Kachimo bar. My group's done uh, the Kachimo, and our slogan is uh, Think Chocolate, Think Kachimo. Um, basically, at the start we looked on the internet about Cadbury's and Galaxy, and we thought, why don't we put marshmallows in? And as we, as we were cooking today, we um, thought that, why don't we try something new and why don't we put melt marshmallows and um, put, the, put it on the top like, so it's like a sauce. As we've developed it, we've refined our outcomes because although we had an idea of kinds of skills and competencies that we wanted at the start, what we've managed to do is refine those skills and competencies so we're much more clearer in our own mind about what we expect at the end of the units. So a general heading, be able to do research, is now refined into be able to do research on the internet, be able to do research in books, be able to use reference, references, be able to use indexes, so that we've got it much more refined now. It just teaches you good stuff that you'll need to know that you'd want usually actually get to learn at school. Year eights are learning to debate. So this lesson, we're looking at you knowing how to discuss relevant ideas. You need to understand how to develop a clear argument. And by the end of the lesson, during the plenary, you should be able to present a case for and against the motion. Uh, they did debating with me last year in year seven. Uh, we're a fantastic group, uh, and I this year. So we're now five weeks into their unit. We do eight-week blocks, and then they go on to another living education unit. For argument's sake, we can use the same scenario. You're actually constructing an argument to go and complain about these kennels that they're looking to build at the end of your road. So how are you going to go about making sure that you go in there fully prepared? Okay, Molly. You want to make sure that other people feel the same about it as well, so you go safety in numbers. I mean, they are very app apprehensive of, of, a, of a people wanting to listen to them, and people wanting to listen to their arguments and what they think. I think too often in schools, it's this is what we need to learn. You learn it, and that's it. And you go and regurgitate it in an exam. Now we are moving more to come on, let's think about this, and, and it's improving these thinking skills, which they can then carry with them into adulthood. What's our motion? Um, that we've got to stay in our own country, so like we're not allowed to go on holidays or anything. So we're not going to have more money than are we? No. So that's for that one. Yeah. All right. It has taken a lot of changing and adapting and you know rewriting, uh, but it's, it's it's been worth it because you can see the results. Uh, I know when I first started, you, you know, you, you, I did try and spoon feed them which wasn't the point of the course, and I thought, right, I need to come away from that. And plus, it was a bit boring. It'll be more freedom to animals instead of being locked up in zoos and everything. And there'd be um, more money instead of buying pet food and things. Less food import makes less, it worse. Um, less country knowledge, because you won't know a lot about other countries. Yeah, because no one's ever been there. Yeah. They won't learn about France or... Becky Italy. won't be able to go on a massive, a massive trip to France. A lot of changes to lesson plans, a lot of rethinking um, and rewriting, and it's still, it's still very organic, it's still moving, it's still in flux, really. The first time I did it, I was shaking and scared, and I didn't like it. Well, and then I calmed down a bit and got on with it. My first point is the freedom of animals. 
If animals are free, then they will be on their own and more adapted to their environment. For example, tigers and elephants won't be under human control. I think I've learned um, more, how to be more confident as well because you're standing up in front of the class. And we all, we learn as well how to put your ideas down on paper so you could read it out. Hello, my name is Lauren. I'm going to talk about loss of jobs, reproduction and how people have become <coughs> dependent on animals. I find it easier now than I did at the beginning. What was it like at the beginning? It was scary and like, I don't, I said shy to speak in front of everybody. Self-worth is, is, is important. It, I mean, it's, I think it's the crux of it, uh, that they do feel that what they have to say, people want to listen to them. And I do think that a lot of times children are ignored, you know, in, in a classroom situation because the teacher is, you know, sort of like trying to get through what they have to teach them content-wise. The motion that we think is the captivity of animals should be banned, voting for the proposition. <coughs> and vo voting for the opposition. The Living Education Programme is now part of the QCA's Key Stage 3 curriculum review. Like many of the ideas in the review, it's radical and it's meant big changes for teachers. I think there's a number of stumbling blocks. I think one is staff. It's totally outside of most people's training, totally outside of most people's own subject. In order to get over that, we gave people particular units to teach. So they would have a seven or eight week unit of work that they had to deliver so they could become experts on their bit of living education. So that was one way forward with that. With any new product, you have to be able to sell it. And the selling point was that they didn't have to spend hours planning it. We actually started with the schemes of work up and running, which we did the summer beforehand. So you were handed a scheme of work, you were handed a set of lesson plans. All you had to do as a teacher was look at the group that you had looked at their attainment level and worked out how you'd have to differentiate the lesson. So essentially all your worksheets as a package were there for you. We've been going for about two years. We're beginning to see the fruits of that labour with our current year nines, where we expect our level five results to be above 65%, which is a 20 odd percentage point increase from where we started. It's changed from me doing a lesson plan coming in and saying, right, this is what we're doing and we do it, to more flexibility. You've now got to build more flexibility in because if something does go off, if somebody does want to discuss something in more detail, you can actually incorporate that into it. And as I say, it's nice because I'm on my toes. I'm learning and I'm uh, getting benefit from it as well. When those students were explaining what they've done, uh, even I was taken back by how, how, how articulate they are, how well they thought things through, how much they'd learnt. And I didn't teach them all of that. I gave them the opportunity to learn those things. They did the learning. I think it's absolutely marvellous. I look at them and I think, you know, this is what education should be about.